It is Wednesday, August 19th. Welcome to CGN News. A total of 139 candidates have been nominated to contest the September 3 general elections in Jamaica. The Jamaica Labour Party and the People's National Party have each entered a full slate of 63 candidates. 13 independent candidates were also nominated. The Electoral Office of Jamaica, the EOJ, says of the 139 candidates, there are 105 males and 34 females. The EOJ says it will now intensify preparations for the Special Services Voting Day on Monday, August 31. On that day, Election Day workers and members of the security forces will cast their ballots. Kamla Prasad Bisesar, political leader of the United National Congress, one week after the TNT general elections, has conceded defeat. In a statement issued Tuesday afternoon, she said after some days of reflection and monitoring the progress of the election recount process, she is satisfied that the people have spoken and that Dr. Rowley and his party shall form the new government of Trinidad and Tobago. In congratulating and wishing them all the best, she expressed disappointment with the election while accepting full responsibility for the result. For those expecting her to step aside, Pasad Bisesa said for 25 years she has invested in the youth of the country and it is her duty to facilitate the development and transformation that must take place in the UNC. President Paula May Weeks will swear in Dr. Keith Rowley as Prime Minister today. The announcement was made via a media release on Tuesday. Dr. Rowley said his entire cabinet will be sworn in as well. The ceremony will take place at 4 p.m. at the President's house. Given the most recent COVID-19 protocols and after consultation with Chief Medical Officer, the office of the President has had to reduce the number of invitees to witness the ceremony. President of the Jamaica Olympic Association, the JOA, Christopher Samuda, has been appointed President of the Legal Commission of the Regional Sport Body, the Central American and Caribbean Sport Organization, CACSO. Samuda, an attorney at law, is a member of the executive board of CACSO, a 32-member organization of English, Spanish, and French-speaking countries. CACSO owns the Central American and Caribbean CAC Games, the oldest continuing multi-sport regional games in the world. The first edition of the Games was held in 1926 in Mexico, and the last staging was in 2018 in Colombia. The JOA president now leads the regional body's juridical team, which is charged with the responsibility of dealing with all legal matters of the CACSO. Responding to his appointment, Samuda said he was very grateful for the opportunity to serve the region. Overseas now, Mali's president, Ibrahim Boubacar Keita, has resigned after being detained by soldiers on Tuesday, State TV reports. In a televised address, Keita said he was also dissolving the government and parliament. It comes hours after he and Prime Minister Bobo Sisse were taken to a military camp near the capital, drawing condemnation from regional powers and France. Keita won a second term in elections in 2018, but there has been anger over corruption, the mismanagement of the economy, and the rise of communal violence in areas of the country. It has prompted several large protests in recent months. A new opposition coalition has called for reforms after rejecting concessions from Keita, including the formation of a unity government. Prosecutors in Angola have ordered the closure of places of worship belonging to one of Brazil's biggest churches, accusing it of corruption. At least seven buildings belonging to the Universal Church of the Kingdom of God, the UCKG, have been seized in the capital, Luanda. Prosecutors said the Evangelical Church has been involved in tax fraud and other fiscal crimes, a report by BBC News stated. UCKG officials have previously strongly denied any wrongdoing. Last year, about 300 Angolan UCKG bishops broke away from the Brazilian leadership, accusing it of mismanagement and not being African enough. UCKG officials described the accusations as defamatory. According to a newly released report, Russia's President Vladimir Putin 
personally directed the efforts to hack computer networks and accounts affiliated with the Democratic Party and leak information damaging to Hillary Clinton. A Senate Intelligence Panel report on Tuesday informed that Russia used Republican political operative Paul Manafort, the WikiLeaks website and others to try to influence the 2016 U.S. presidential election to help now U.S. President Donald Trump's campaign, a Senate Intelligence Panel report said on Tuesday. WikiLeaks played a key role in Russia's effort to assist Republican Trump against Democrat Hillary Clinton and likely knew it was helping Russian intelligence, said the report, which is likely to be the most definitive public account of the 2016 election controversy. Churches across the United States, according to the Associated Press, are filing lawsuits over COVID-19 restrictions. Last Thursday, AP said three churches from Minnesota filed a lawsuit against Minnesota Governor Tim Walz for his executive orders requiring people to wear masks and adhere to social distancing guidelines while attending religious gatherings. The churches are reportedly being represented by the conservative law firm Thomas More Society. The Minnesota churches join Suncoast Baptist Church, Palmetto, Florida, where Reverend Joel Tillis took issue with a mask mandate and filed a complaint against Manatee County. Some churches, however, have been unsuccessful in contending for the right to resume their religious activities. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau tapped Christia Freeland to be Canada's first female finance minister on Tuesday as an ethics scandal that clipped her predecessor's wings reverberates through the government. Freeland received a standing ovation after being sworn in at a small ceremony in Ottawa, the AFP reported. Guests socially distanced, wore face masks, and Freeland greeting Trudeau with an elbow bump after taking the oath of office, telling reporters that it was about time that we broke that glass ceiling. Freeland, 52, has held key posts in the Liberal government, including Deputy Prime Minister, a role she keeps, and Foreign Minister, as well as leading free trade talks with the U.S. and Mexico. The Prime Minister later announced the suspension of Parliament until September 23, when his minority government will lay out a new direction. The Jamaica Veterinary Medical Association, the JVMA, has reacted to the potentially harmful use of animals during election activities. In a press release, the vets pointed out that one party supporter was seen painting a dog's face green. In another instance, a grey horse was ridden through a constituency on asphalt without shoes and its mane and tail dyed orange. The JVMA said both situations can have detrimental effects on these animals. The skin of a dog is more sensitive than human skin. Absorption of paints, especially metal and oil-based paints, irritate the skin and can also lead to poisoning. Inhalation may result in infection and difficulty breathing. The group said that other symptoms include depression, difficulty walking, and tremors. That's it for CGN News. I'm Scott Wilson. Thanks for watching.